Hello and Namaste. If a tree falls in a forest and nobody is there, does it make a sound? The answer is not as obvious as you think. Do things really exist where there is no one to observe it? The book Biocentrism begins with these intriguing questions. But it is not a book on philosophy. It is a science book written by two scientists, Robert Lanza, a biologist, and Bob Berman, an astronomer. Those of you who have studied Vedanta would be familiar with the concept of consciousness. Vedanta proclaims that consciousness is the only reality. The whole universe is born out of consciousness, it is sustained by it and resolves into it. All the things that we experience and the entire universe is just an illusion, a projection of consciousness. This consciousness is called Sakshi or the observer in Vedanta. While I am used to these ideas in Vedanta, I never expected a science book written by scientists to arrive at very similar conclusions. Robert Lanza uses the findings of quantum physics and Einstein's relativity and proposes a new theory for the origin of the universe. According to his theory, which he calls biocentrism, consciousness is central to the working of the universe. Universe would not exist without an observer. The universe came into existence for the explicit purpose of creating life. Conscious beings are not a random occurrence, but the purpose for which the universe came into existence. The most obvious conclusions we can draw from both quantum physics and Einstein's relativity is that the observer is central to the working of the universe. Experiments in quantum physics show us that the behavior of particles depend on the observer. So much so that some of the biggest minds of quantum physics like Max Planck and Heisenberg concluded that a particle has no real existence until it is observed. Take a minute for it to sink in. Until someone observes it, a particle does not exist. Similarly, Einstein's relativity proved that space and time are mutable entities dependent on an observer. The observer appears to be the key and center to the functioning of the universe both at atomic and macroscopic scales. Another strange thing about the universe is that it is delicately fine-tuned for life. All the fundamental constants of physics have a perfect value to enable the formation of matter and life. Even if they varied by a tiny fraction, the universe could not have existed. For example, if the Big Bang was 0.00001 times more powerful than what it was, we would not have any galaxies or stars or planets and life would not have been possible. The four basic forces of nature, which are the building blocks of the universe, gravity, electromagnetic force, the strong and weak nuclear forces are perfectly and delicately tuned for the formation of atoms. There are close to 35 fundamental constants in physics, all of which have the precise value needed for the formation of our universe, a universe which is perfectly suited for life. It is impossible that a random occurrence could have resulted in these perfect set of parameters. The authors give an analogy to understand how unlikely this is. Let's say you are standing in front of a firing squad and 100 riflemen have their guns pointed at you. They have all shot at you and all of them have missed you. What is the probability of that happening by chance? The fine tuning of the universe is similar to that. There are a billion possibilities in which life cannot exist and only one possibility where it can and our universe is that one possibility out of a billion. It should be noted that the authors are not making a case for God or for intelligent design. They say that the only way these findings make sense is if the purpose of the universe was to create observers. They propose an alternate theory for the origin of the universe called biocentrism. These are some of the principles of the theory. The universe cannot exist without a conscious observer. Universe acquires a tangible shape and form only when it is observed. Until an observer appears, the entire universe is in a state of probability. It does not exist. Both space and time are illusions created by consciousness. Lanza says that the universe appears to be fine-tuned for life 
because life creates universe and not the other way round. The universe is just a projection of the self. Brahmai vaham idam jagatcha sakalam chinmatra vistaritam sarvam chaidada vidyaya trigunaya shesham maya kalpitam. This entire universe is only an expansion of pure consciousness. It has been conjured up by the self. These words written by Shankaracharya a few hundred years back echoes in the writings of Robert Lanza and Bob Berman. How amazing is that? That's it from me. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and press the bell icon for reminders. Please share this video with your friends and like-minded people. Until next time, Namaste.